Hi Tappers. Last week, we dove in deep into the pain of self-abandonment. If you missed it, check it out here. Running away from overwhelming pain is pretty straightforward. But what about running away from really great stuff? In other words, how well do you take a compliment? Do you self-sabotage? Are you able to celebrate your accomplishments? Likely not. Why is that? Because self-abandonment isn't just about avoiding negative, overwhelming emotions. It branches out to avoid all big emotions, including positive ones. The survival skill of leaving the present moment becomes integrated as a habit and the warning bell for danger becomes being too present. Because if you are present, you are at danger of feeling and feeling has been tagged as dangerous to your survival in your subconscious brain. So you avoid it. You learn to deflect it, graciously or not, or you learn to people please and mirror what you feel they want your response to be while not actually feeling it inside. Now this does protect you from feeling bad things, but at some point you likely began to desire to feel good things and have been discouraged by the wall of numbness that you encounter when you attempt to connect or you feel intense pressure to feel things when you're put into an emotional situation. For example, I remember as a child loving to have everyone around for my birthday party. It was fun to see everyone and run around and play, but I dreaded when I had to sit down and everyone was staring at me to sing me happy birthday. It filled me with terrible anxiety and I was people pleasing to my best ability, worrying if I was doing it right, if I was convincing. So I was smiling and saying, oh, thank you. While I was fighting back tears of overwhelm, I still hate surprises and it's for the same reason. I need time to put my defenses up against all of this inflow of present attention. Now I knew they were doing something nice for me and giving me an example of love and support and I genuinely wanted their love and support, but I hated every moment of this. It made no sense to me. I felt like I was doing this. Yeah, I want it. Okay, here you go. No, take it back, take it back. Through my life, I quit things that people complimented me on. As soon as they told me I was highly talented in it, I ghosted it. It was terrifying to be complimented, and I felt insane for having this response. And it was really sad to impulsively leave things that I genuinely liked doing. Not to mention feeling really irresponsible and like a big letdown. Question, if an encouraging environment felt threatening to my subconscious brain, what types of situations and quality of people do you think I felt safe with? Not happy, not satisfied, not loving. I unconsciously sought out and kept company with people who weren't nice to me as it allowed me to continue my safety zone of dissociation. Now, I hadn't learned how to downregulate, so my whole life was structured around my survival response, and I had no education on this, so I unknowingly complied, thinking I was doing what was best. Instead, I was supporting more of what I didn't want. So if you are in a place of wanting to refind this connection that is mysteriously blocked and terrifying to actually encounter and against your survival response to engage, what can you do? I'm glad you asked. The pain point for all of this can be whittled down to a single word, safety. You are looking to shift what is considered safe and not safe in your brain. Your subconscious brain takes this matter very seriously both about not changing if it doesn't see a problem and changing it quickly if it does. Now this means it's imperative that we find the correct questions and discover the root issue. Some are easier than others, so let's first create a bank from which to choose. Take a piece of paper and create two columns, safe, not safe. To give yourself some context, maybe think through your daily life. Is it safe to get out of bed in the morning? Is it safe to look yourself in the eye in the mirror? Is it safe to be present, meaning like not on your phone, while you eat breakfast or drink coffee? Is it safe to not rush? 
Is it safe to sing out loud while you get ready or drive to work? Is it safe to express your true opinion on something? Is it safe to offer a solution or constructive criticism to something? Is it safe to make eye contact with others? Is it safe to acknowledge your accomplishments? Is it safe to compliment someone else? Make whatever list comes to you, even if you think of something out of context from where you started. Now you have choices of where to begin. Here's a general layout of a tapping script that you can use to disarm your brain. I'll give you all the steps, then I'll give you an actual tapping example of it. We want to disarm any defenses that the brain might feel about a challenge to this survival response. Then become curious. Why would I want to feel this? Accept that. Be curious again. I wonder if there's something else that could be even more beneficial. Deny it. Nope. There's no way anything is more beneficial than this. Here, we are trying to cross a line of reasoning that the brain itself will begin to question. Become curious again. But what if there was? I would definitely want it if there were. I wonder, would fill in the blank be better? Replace that with something you are wanting. It doesn't have to be the almighty best response. A slight upgrade will do. It's not a one-time only offer. So give yourself permission to go for better for now. A slight upgrade will do. It's not a one-time offer. So give yourself permission to go for better for now. At this point, we are not figuring out how to get it. We're just determining if it would in fact be better. Accept it either way. List three facts you already believe that support that new belief. End with an open-ended mind about it. Here is an example of the whole process. Even though right now I believe it is not safe to be flirtatious, I deeply and completely accept myself. It's okay that I feel this. There have been times where people have been mean to me because I was flirty. It makes sense that this wouldn't feel safe. I fully accept that this is where I am. But I wonder, what benefits am I getting from this now? In what ways does it serve me to hold this part of me back? Well, I don't want to be the target of negative attention again, and I am afraid of being misunderstood or judged by having a flirtatious side. That makes sense to not want those things. Of course, I don't want that. But I wonder, is there another way to feel that would be better for me than afraid of my flirtatious side? No, no, fear is for sure the best thing for me to feel about this. It's truly the most healthy way for me to feel about being flirty. Hmm, but what if there was? What if there was a better way for me to feel? What about cautious? Would feeling cautious be better than fearful? Whether or not I feel this would be better, I deeply and completely accept myself. I think it would. Being cautious feels more empowering, like I could determine each situation rather than having only one feeling attached to it constantly. And feeling cautious is less dreadful than fear all of the time. It is a possibility for sure. And as I hold space to possibly upgrade my current beliefs of it being safe to feel cautious rather than fearful about being flirty, I deeply and completely accept myself. So if you aren't feeling resistance to the new idea after you tap, you will naturally start to gravitate to experiences in which you test this new theory, whether you do it intentionally or not. To summarize, your brain is only trying to keep you safe. At some point, keeping you from all feelings and all present emotions fell into that category. In order to shift that, you have to help it see that it can in fact be safe now and be emotional. This is one way. We'll explore a different aspect next week. I'll see you soon.